So this is gonna be like a summary because really not much new to say. So summary. It's been over a week and oh, well, a week and what two days since I had my surgery. This is about the second reversal and what I went through. It's gonna be a little bit different for everyone. Well, as I understand. Okay, so a summary. Before, before the surgery, they'll let you know all this stuff. You know, the facility that's doing it, they'll call you and everything, and they'll tell you. What they did with me is they called me the day before and told me when the procedure was. But the rules are no food. I made a list. Put things down. No food after midnight, no matter what time your surgery is. Apparently, that's what they told me. Is that uh, if the surgery is even at like 6 a.m. or 4 a.m., still no food after midnight. Basically, have your stomach empty. Um, you can have clear liquids uh, and no. Uh, I didn't write it down, but I believe they told me over the phone and uh, no green tea. I don't know why. There might be something in it. But uh, you can have clear liquids up to two hours before the surgery and then nothing after that. So mine was at 7.15, so at 5.15, I could not have anything. Not even water. Um, <clears throat> 7 to 10 days before. So about, yeah, so about a week before. No aspirin, no tile, no, no aspirin, no ibuprofen, because those are blood thinners. I didn't know ibuprofen was, no aspirin was. But no blood thinners at all, because you're going to have Tylenol only. You know, it's surgery. Who wants to have blood thinners? Bleeding out, right? Don't want your blood too thin. You want to be able to let it heal. So, seven to ten days before, no aspirin, no ibuprofen, no type of blood thinners. And even after, seven to ten days after. So, I'm still not taking any ibuprofen. And I'll explain that in a bit. Uh, so, any prescriptions? I don't take prescriptions. They told me no prescription, basically... They asked me if I had prescriptions, I said no, and so they didn't really explain it. So the prescription part, I would say, talk to your doctor. Talk to their doctor, talk to the doctor you're going to, talk to the doctor who prescribed it, just to make sure that you can take them still, if you really, really need them. I would say blood thinners, no, but I'm not your doctor. Um, of course, you need a ride home, because... There's no way you can drive afterwards. Not at all. No. As I was saying, I have sinus issues. They're getting better because I was in a chiropractor getting my neck popped, my back, because I was way out of alignment. They're getting a little bit better, but recently, you know, I can't lay on my stomach because to get my back popped. Because of this procedure and well my sinuses were kind of bad and I have a bad gag reflex my sinuses don't help so drain down the back right on to it makes me just like oh don't want that to happen but I didn't want that to happen along with my nerves and all that that causes my sinus issues so what I had to do I had to go without water for uh, two hours before, usually I have water or something to drink with me, so in case my gag reflex does act up, and then I could take a little sip, and it helps. It washes it down. It helps my gag reflex some. But I didn't. Like, I couldn't. I was trying so hard not to. But my gag reflex didn't bother me that much. My wife was there. She stayed with me the whole time, and she was a great help. Very big help on keeping me calm. And <clears throat> I'm also one of those that can't really sit still. And now, like, I'm playing with this with my hands. It's just a whole bunch of ties. <laughs> anyway, I'm not one to really sit still, so I was doing stuff on my phone too, playing games. Well, I have games on the phone. Another thing that affects my gag reflex is <sighs> yeah, these masks. Because, uh,. The COVID suggestions, they're not laws, 
There's still suggestions, but yet we're having to do them. And having to wear masks all the time. I don't want it, but it goes with any other virus. I don't want the flu. I don't want a cold. I don't want COVID. I don't want had swine flu. That sucked. Anyway. With the mask, it doesn't help with my sinuses, my gag reflex, any of that. Well, like I said, my wife is there. She was pretty cool about it. Kept me calm. So. Now that the main thing, main thing, is to find out from your work um, what's going to happen, how to do a like, short-term disability, or if you can take two, three weeks off. Because my operation was on a Wednesday. My work schedule is Tuesday through Saturday as a mechanic. As a mechanic, there's not much, well actually none, light duty, apparently. So I was supposed to, I took one day off because it was kind of unclear of what to do. So I took the one day off and I thought I was going to go back to work on light duty for a few weeks after that. Then I thought about it and I put in for two days off. Well, <clears throat> my doctor said that, like right before the surgery and well, because I was still kind of coherent then. <laughs> but right before the surgery, he said, you're going to have to take the rest of the week off. And then put, he put me on light duty. Well, like I said, as a mechanic, I didn't, well, I didn't know this before. So I put in for the rest of the week off and I talked to my bosses, sent them the afterwards. I sent them the doctor's note and everything. And they said there was no light duty. So I had to in for short-term disability haven't heard back but that's a different matter that has nothing to do with this but just find out from your job what can be done like light duty like have a week off take light duty after that i got another week what's today yeah i got another week and a half until i do a follow-up with the doctor so i can be released back to work that's kind of basically the before and of course, COVID going on, kind of, so, well, was, the place I went to, they had valet. And what I just told before is, I'm supposed to sit in the car, give them a call, they'll come down and get me, do all my, check my temperature and all that stuff, and they'll go back, do other stuff, then they'll come down and get me and all that. And then, no, that didn't happen. They had valet, uh, and I went, walked right in, had to, of course, my mask did. Uh, temperature checks, it was a walk in, got signed in, all that did a temperature check right away, did another temperature check, and lots of temperature checks. Okay, now, I know I'm not a professional at this, I'm still learning how to do the video and all that. So bear with me, if you will, whoever's watching. <laughs> Hopefully, um, hopefully this will help people out, because I tried looking up the sector universals, like, testimonies and all that. The only thing I found was the actual procedure, and there was one video of them actually doing it, and I was like, I don't want to see that. So, hopefully, hopefully people will find this, because I'm still learning on YouTube how to put, well, they said tags don't help that much, but I'm putting tags. And hopefully in the description and the title and everything, people will be able to find this okay and find it helpful. As I said, my notes, I gotta keep checking them out. Anyway, during the procedure, okay, first off they said, I forgot to say this in the before, wear loose fitting clothing. I was trying to figure out type of underwear and pants. I was like, I have loose pants, the carpenter pants are really loose and then I'll just wear my sandals. Then my wife was like, just, uh, so what kind of PJs you want to wear? And you can wear your slippers. And I was like. They were the stretchiest pair they have. I'll take my chances. That's a great idea. That's a lot better than wearing jeans and then trying to put them on afterwards. Which apparently I didn't have to do. Huh. Also. Okay. They mentioned before the surgery. I can't remember now if it was before or after, because a lot of that was kind of mixed up because of the anesthesia and anesthetics, however that word is, um, from waking up. They said to get a jock strap, because they supply it, what's a medical one, it's like a jock strap, 
and it works to hold things in place and everything. So they said, need a jock strap. Need to buy one. Well, I got one. Got one my size. Um, as jock straps go, they're designed to hold everything in place. So I'm trying to oh, let's keep this kind of family. Right, so the testes are supposed to hold them in place, protect everything down there. So if it, by protecting it, they're going to hold it in place so it doesn't jostle them out too much, of course. So that's what the jock straps for, so it doesn't bounce too much. Because the incisions are on the sides, you don't want them hitting your leg, bouncing all over, and it's going to hurt. Trust me, it does hurt. I've tried it. Tried a little bit moving without it. Yeah, wait a bit for the heel up to when you're ready to try walking without it. But anyway, as the jock strap goes, get the next size bigger. I got one just the size, and whew, it's felt like they were being like squeezed the whole time. So I wore it until my wife, my wife, she's been great. She's been doing a lot of things for me when I can't do much. But uh, she washed my other one that the got from the medical facility, and that one is better because it's a little bit looser, especially with the gauze bandages around it. Oh yeah, you need to buy gauze band bandages too. Um, okay, so during, this is the section on during. During, you need to wear large loose clothes, like I mentioned, PJs, and slippers. It's perfect. Once you're admitted, you gotta be, they give you that robe that's kind of open in the back, but not really. It flaps around. So, everything is like closed off. They give you that gown to wear, just over the front, ties in the back, of course, without your clothes on. And you gotta talk about your allergies. So I'm allergic to penicillin, so of course I told him, because I don't want penicillin. Last time I took it, it's not good at all. Uh, yeah, sit there and then wait. Wait for the doctor, wait for the right time. Everything is set on a schedule. Sometimes. Okay. What happened is, the, the doctors and nurses, everyone there is so nice. But, just like any workplace, even those of you who are watching, look around your workplace. Communication isn't 100%. It never is. And I'll be surprised if it ever will be in any workplace. There's always a lack of communication somewhere. There was a tiny bit of miscommunication between the doctor and... I'm not sure if it's a nurse or... I don't know. I don't know exactly who she was. She was the one setting up his procedures. But he didn't know he had two patients today. He thought he only had one. He, so I don't know if it was a miscommunication or if he forgot... But, you know, they joked around about it, and always decided to do the first, the other patient first because that one was a little faster. And it took a little bit longer than they thought, but, so I had to sit there for a little longer. No big deal at all. I don't know why people complain. Uh, people will, people do complain about s stupid things like that. Things happen. Nothing to complain about. Don't worry. You're still going to be seen. This doctor is still going to take care of you. If you're nice... They're nice. So when it was my time to go, I was laying there. Oh, yeah, I forgot. The, after I had the gown on, they put a blanket on me and hook up a vacuum tube. Looks like a vacuum tube, but it's not. It was a heater hose. Blows warm air or cool air. Depends what you change it to. But they put warm air on me because they wanted me warm. Warm for the surgery. So I was nice and warm sitting there in that chair. And uh, they took me, when it was time, they put me in a wheelchair, took me back. Uh, my wife was able to wait in the patient room, not patient, like a dining hall in a way, but it's like a waiting room. I guess it was uh, like a lounge. I haven't been in it. She should be able to explain more. Also, anyway, um, they brought me back. Laid, I got up and had to lay down on a table, open up the back of my robe, but hold it until, you know, robe, gown. But hold it, once I lay it down, I was able to open it up. Because I didn't want to moon everybody, apparently. They don't like that, maybe. I don't know. They've probably seen enough. Doesn't bother them any. Uh, 
Then they put the oxygen mask on. Well, they had an oxygen mask because they said they needed the oxygen at a certain level. Oxygen in my blood because they hooked me up and everything and the IV. Oh, yeah, I was sitting in the chair. They put the IV needle in to get it prepared. Oh, I forgot that. I'm not bit big on needles. I'm not worried about needles. I'm not scared of them or nothing, but I know some people are. So, of course, you're going to have an IV. Anyway, I was laying on the table. I did the IVs and all that. The oxygen... And my blood needed to be at a certain level. So I was supposed to use an oxygen mask. And this place is also a training facility so for students. So the person was explaining everything when I was listening in. And I'm glad he did because it makes sense when he's sitting there explaining it. He probably would explain it to me some, but not as though as he would to students. But sitting there listening to them explain everything, it, you know, it makes sense. They're supposed to use the mask, and he explained, he showed it, put the mask on, covers your nose and mouth, and supposed to be, take deep breaths to get the oxygen in. But goatee, you know, doesn't make a good seal, especially down around here, and it's hard to do in a backwards thing, you know. Since I, this was a little longer then, since I didn't shave it down or I have a goatee, that was, you can't put the mask directly on, so they popped it off, and I was supposed to hold the hose in between my teeth and my mouth, and take deep breaths. I did that for a little bit, but my gag reflex kicked in, and I couldn't do it. So, as he explained, that they'd have to hold it, pinch it over the nose a little, and then kind of push it down on the bottom to try to make it seal around here. And it worked. Probably a little longer than they wanted to, because I was taking deep breaths, and it was like, probably didn't seal properly right there on my chin. But, it worked. So, remember that. If you have a goatee, and you don't mind shaving it off, just shave it off. That way they can use the mask. If you want to hold it in between your teeth, hold those between your teeth, and put your lips around it, and take some deep breaths in. That raises the oxygen. Then I was out. I don't know for how long. I don't remember exactly what time I went in. And I remember what time I got home. I think I left that. I think I got in there at like 10. And I left there at 3 p.m. Maybe it was 10.30 when I got in and left there at 3 p.m. Anyway, while I was out... What they do in the procedure is they'll take a test sample to see if you have good sperm. If you don't have good sperm, then they'll try to get as much as they can so you can possibly, uh, basically up to you guys, which would be up to the wife because you're passed out. Um, well, the guy passed out, so it's up to the, the spouse to kind of decide. And we already talked about it before, what to do, just in case. Kind of, a little bit. And anyway, they do a test to make sure I have good sperm. And like I said, the doctor was really nice. Uh, my wife said that he went in and talked to her. She even recorded the what he said and everything. So I was able to listen to that a couple days later. I didn't want to listen to it the same day, not after the anesthesia. And told her that I had good sperm. And they're just going to have to connect the tubes, and everything will be good. So, also, she said in the, the lounge area, there was a TV screen that would show uh, the patient's name and the process in So that was great. She was able to kind of see and judge what was going on, in a way. Anyway, so apparently I had good sperm. Which is great because my vasectomy was in 2002. This is 2020. 18 years later, I still had good sperm. So for the don't let anybody get you down about it or anything. Okay. So there's always a possibility. You know, they say it's a less chance because it's been so long. You don't know. You don't really know until you're tested and everything. It's your body. Everybody's body is different. Just like pain level, mine is a little bit higher than most, but probably not as high, you know, 
That's a lot. What I mean is, um, be able to tolerate pain, pain tolerance. So, on that, um, <clears throat> I woke up. I was still kind of loopy and everything for that whole day. Trying to get, uh, yeah, for that whole day. We were supposed to pick up a truck that day, too. <laughs> well, since I went through surgery, do not, no big decisions on the same day you have surgery. You're still kind of out of it. I still barely even remember that. I remember I got home about four ish. I think we stopped for coffee and I was hungry. I don't remember if we got food on the way home. That's how crazy it gets. Just right after surgery, you're like, what? So let's talk about the after. The after after. Not the same day after surgery, but the after 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 the next day. And what to do afterwards. Okay? So. I took a shower that day of the surgery. Was it the day? Maybe the day before. No, it was the day before because I had to be in early. So I took a shower the day before. Made sure I was all cleaned up because you cannot shower for 48 hours after your surgery. I waited that whole 48 hours. I knew I got home at 4, so about 5 o'clock, two days later, 5 or 6, I took a shower and it felt good to take a shower. <laughs> also, anyway. So, no showering for 48 hours after your surgery. No tubs, no bathtub, no taking a bath because no soaking, that area. What they did was, there's incisions on both sides of the scrotum. And those, they're not actual stitches, the Oh, I can't remember what they said they were. They're dissolvable and they come off on their own. So I don't have to actually go see the doctor. I gotta find out about that because I think I'm just gonna do a call-in visit instead of going in to see on the Monday in a week and a half to see if I'm okay to return to full duty. I think they said in six months after the surgery they do a check to make sure everything's working right. Make sure, you know, I've got actual sperm coming out. Your throat will be sore right after waking up because of the anesthesia. You have to put the tube down your throat. Of course, help you breathe. They don't want you choking. They don't want you gagging. They want you to be able to breathe. They want you to stay alive during all this, of course. They don't want anything bad happening, and neither do you. So... Like I said, everybody's nice. They know what they're doing. They know exactly every step of the way. Um, but anyway, your throat will be sore because of the tube that's down it. Sucks. It was sore for about three days. It was getting better each day. But it just feels like <clears throat> a little scratchy. Like, like you get a sore throat. That's kind of what it feels like. You know, warm, wick, warm, warm, warm liquids help. <laughs> I drink coffee, want to try to cut that down a lot, but tea. Oh, tea was so good against it. Um, I said that sore throat is normal. It'll go away. Uh, the incisions, like I said, were on both sides. Of course, there was going to be swelling. Thought they were big before. Now they're even bigger. <laughs> but not in a good way. Well, it is a good way. But you yeah, have incisions, a surgery. Of course, around any surgery, there's going to be some swelling because your body's healing. Natural, normal. Happens to anything. Like, even if you get a cut on your finger, if you little, notice it's a little bumped up, it's swelling. It's trying to heal. Um, ice packs. Yeah, you get an ice pack. Get one, um, my wife has one for her back. Well, it's for her back. I don't, I don't even see her use it. I don't think I've seen her use it. Anyway, it's for her back, so it's kind of long. And it works perfect, because you freeze it. It's one of those gel packs. It doesn't, like, stiffen up. It's still able, you can flex it and all that, even though it's frozen. So you just tuck it under a little bit and fold it up. Up and over. 
Get him on ice. It helps. Put him in a little ice, and that'll take care of him. Don't have it on ice 24-7. Uh-uh. No. He's have it on ice for, um... I did about an, half an hour to an hour, and then take it off for a couple hours. And then if you want to, put it back on. Do that for about two days. I did three days. But on the third day, I had it on for a bit. I can tell things were getting numb, so then I took it off for about five, six hours. <laughs> Threw it back in the freezer, waited a while, long time, put it on again. So for me, it was about three days. I did it, just to be safe. I'd rather be safe than sorry, won't we all? And uh, so you can continue to do it if you want, but that's up to you. Three days was good enough. Um, pain. It's an operation, it's a cut, it's surgery, there's going to be some pain. For me, I felt little pain. Not much. Again, like I said, no aspirin, no ibuprofen, no type of blood thinners. You're trying to heal. There's going to be blood around it because it's an incision. It's a cut. Yeah. Make a break in your skin, it bleeds. So, no blood thinners, no ibuprofen, no aspirin, which is strange for me because ibuprofen I take for sinus migraines, sinus issues. Anyway, so still Tylenol. They prescribed me something for the pain. I, I do not like that stuff. No. I can't remember what it is, but I don't even know what that is. I even have it. I think I tossed it. Anyway, they prescribed me something for the pain. I I had to take it before, and it's, no, that stuff is like the worst ever. I don't know how people can ever take that stuff. That's just the way it made me feel. I mean, it's like I had no brain at all. I was sat there like drooling in a bit. So no, I just stuck with Tylenol. I took two Tylenol one day. The second day, I took two more. I'll explain why in a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, Tylenol. That's all I took. Those two on the on the I think it was the day after. I don't think I took any that day that I came home. I think it was one of the day after I took two and then the, the second day I took another two. I don't remember exactly, because the day after, like I said, was kind of a bluish. Yeah, limit you moving. No moving the first day, barely any moving the second day. And I am going to stress that because I am not one to sit still, as you can, as I said before, because I'm sitting there messing around with this flat thing of wire ties that come with trash bags. I'm messing around with it. <laughs> I can't sit still that much. So, of course, the second day I tried to move around as much as I could. No lifting, no lifting, anything, no heavy lifting. And yeah, so moving around, that wasn't too smart because it made it hurt a little more. That's why I took the two Tylenol the next day. So I learned from that. <laughs> Tried to sit still as much as I could. My wife's very supportive. She'll always get anything I'd ask for, anything I need. She would get it. She would do... I feel kind of bad because she's been doing everything, but if I did anything, um, anything a little strenuous, I'd tear it. And I don't want it torn, and I don't want to go back to get sewn back up. We don't want that. So... Sit still. Heal. You need to heal. Hmm, also a little bit. I should turn it on a while ago. Also, okay. Hopefully this is helping people. I, I posted um, videos of like day one on two for a bit, but I stopped because it's there wasn't much new to talk about. There was no comments. So I don't know if this is helping. I don't know if anybody can even find it. Probably not. Anyway. Like I said, jockstrap. No moving. Be careful. Be slow. 
They give you the list um, on the second day. Move slowly. That doesn't mean the day after. It means the second day. Wait two days. Get up. Do some walking around. Move around. Everything. And I could not bend over to pick stuff up. I tried to... What I did was I put my feet together and... My knees were pointing away, and I'd basically squat down that way. <laughs> that was most, mostly to go to the bathroom, to drop my pants and all that so I could go on the, you know, go to the bathroom. And not only that, speaking of going to the bathroom, because of anesthesia and, you know, other medications, take stool softeners, at least two days, maybe three three if you want but at least two days it helps you don't want to strain you don't want to sit there and try to grunt and huff and try to get every last one out and then bust your nut split them open break a seal however you want to put it there's lots of ways of saying it and i'm trying to be <laughs> not too adult <laughs> i'm ever going to be able to have <laughs> So along with being careful, I'm also a gamer, and I haven't been able to play that much because of my job and well, other things, but I was able to play Horizon Zero Dawn, and I've played that whole game. That's, that was awesome. I'd say somebody, yeah, you need to play it if you like video games. Anyway, being a gamer, I got video games, sit and relax, especially with the COVID suggestions that everybody is willing to, that would stay home. Nothing else to do. Um, the jockstrap, like I said, the other one I had, the other one I got, was the right size for me, but gotta remember, squeezing. Oh. It holds things in place, so it squeezes. That is not a good feeling when you're swollen up and you got the gauze bandages along the incisions. Oh. So get the, like I said before, jockstrap, get it the next size up. Little secret for me. Next size up. If you are large, get an extra large. If you're an extra large, try to find a double extra large. I don't know if they even make those. But I don't know. Make sure you get double X to go the next size up, so it's not too much. It's like the best way I can explain it is just squeeze as hard as you can on them right now, and that's how it would feel. No, I don't. I'd be surprised if you actually did it <laughs> to try. I don't think any of you would. <laughs> Okay, so like I said, 48 hours before showering. Oh, felt so good to shower. Just don't wash that area. Um, if you can, you know, try to get some water around it. That, that'll help. But no scrubbing, no rubbing. And I didn't try it, but I would say no soap. Like I said, I'm being extremely careful. I tried not to get any soap near there in case it was kind of open. Ow. I don't know how else to put it, but that would hurt. I'd probably be just jumping up and down screaming. Kidding. I'd just sit down and like, clench my fist going, <sighs> you know. <laughs> um, also, when you dry off, you're supposed to lightly pad the areas. No rubbing. None of that. Okay, just lightly, lightly pad, get, get all the moisture off. The day of, right after you get out of surgery, no big decisions. I know I talked about it a little bit before because I was supposed to pick up a truck, but since I just had surgery and the anesthesia, no. And even the dealership was like, ah, no, 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 no. So the next day, my wife and I went and got drunk. I had to sign all the papers, so I was, like I said, I was moving a little more than I probably should have, really should have. 
But we got a truck. And that is a nice truck. Oh. It's so nice. Anyway. Um, rest. Plenty and plenty of rest. If you're tired, sleep. I can't stress that enough. Or you'd be like me and just be like, eh, I'll stay up. You know. But when you're tired, sleep. I was tired and I stayed up anyway. Your body heals faster when you're sleeping. Go figure, right? You're all resting, you're sitting in the sleep, everything else slows down so your body has a chance to attack right where it needs to for healing. It's going to send everything out to heal. Sleep when you're tired. Let me say it again. I don't have to, do I? Um, it's been a week and two days since the surgery. I had it last Wednesday. Today is Friday. Today, no, not today. Yesterday, I wore no normal underwear. Oh. It says seven to ten days wearing that jock strap. Or a protective strap, whatever you want to call it. Who knows? Maybe pharmacists have it, but we didn't. I was just wanting this, and I just wanted to relax. I didn't want to make her go running around everywhere trying to find one thing. When I look it up online, if it doesn't list it, doesn't list it. Why go try and look for it? Because everybody's going online now because of... Do I have to say it again? Um, anyway... So yesterday I wore regular underwear, oh, felt so good, but, and I wore shorts, so I've been wearing sleep pants this whole time, they're nice and loose and comfortable, and if I fall asleep, I fall asleep, I'm already in my PJs, oh yeah, so, and then last night, last night I was being careful, I put on the jock shop, excuse me, of course, to keep things in place, I've been sleeping on, oh, I didn't mention that before, just so I wouldn't roll around, because I'm the kind that would sleep on my side, put your legs together, and you, you squish certain parts when you do that. Let's face it. So, instead of squishing those parts, um, I slept on the couch. That way I wouldn't roll over, and first time I slept kind of sitting up, so that way I knew I wouldn't be rolling over. The couch is not the most comfortable for sleeping, but it is the best for not. Rolling over, squishing. You don't want to lay on your stomach. I can't imagine what that would be like. Ow! My sperm! Wow, me! So yeah, I was sleeping on the couch for a week. And last night, last night, I put on the jock strap and made sure things were okay. My wife was, like I said, she's been very supportive through this whole thing. She's been great. So, she's been doing everything... She's been doing everything. Like, we're having a, a little get-together soon. As a, um, our, kind of like our, uh, oh, I forgot what it's called. Wedding, wedding reception. <laughs> God, it was reception. Jeez, I was going to say something else. Anyway, it's like, our, kind of like our wedding reception. And, uh, I can't do much because I'm not, not supposed to lift much. I don't want to tear anything. So she's been doing a lot already. Makes me feel bad. But she's been fine with it. She's been great. She's been doing everything. But anyway, she's, again, she suggested putting a pillow between my legs. So I laid in bed, put a jock strap on, and I laid down in bed and had a pillow between my legs. So they will sleep on my side, but not crush things, not split seams open. When you split a seam laughing, that's different than splitting a seam literally when you already hurting. All in all, hopefully this helps um, people who are looking into vasectomy reversal. Hopefully you guys find this video and my other ones. Let's see how it goes. Let's see if you have any questions, you can comment. Um, I'm not sure if you can leave me a message. Like I said, still new to this YouTube thing. Still learning. But my wife and I are going to have our own channel about um, what goes on further on. 
and kind of about our pasts and everything. That's going to be like us and any questions people have about any of this. Any fertility, any reversals, like what I'm proposing here, talking about the reversal, or I don't know, um, our experiences in life, maybe. We're doing uh, keto. Maybe you can ask about that. Who knows? But anyway, we're going to have our own channel. We're going to talk more about it. I don't have much to say unless somebody puts in comments or suggestions or like another video on a follow-up. I can do that. Who knows? We'll see how it goes. Oh, one thing. Bleeding. You might get a little tiny bit of blood, but not much. I got a, a couple of little spots, but that was it. That was because I was stupid and I kept moving around. Like I said, relax. Relax. Don't do it. Anyway, just relax. Sit still. Try to oh, relax as much as you can. It's been a week and two days. I'm not in. I'm not in pain unless I do something dumb and kind of squishes them or smacks them. Yeah, like I was sitting on the couch yesterday because I had regular underwear and I slid a little so the underwear kind of and bunched up, kind of pulled tight. That was not a good idea. Got to remember, <laughs> still healing. Anyway, this was my kind of summary on the vasectomy reversal, my experiences, my suggestions, and things that happened to me. So, any ideas? Any comments? Anybody? Anybody? Go now. Bye.